Welcome back. Uh, today I'm going to talk with Zulu, which is a Stanley Baker, Sally Enfield produced film from the mid 60s that was a massive hit in Britain and um, just was one of those things. It, it reignited Sally Enfield's career after he he was a blacklisted director for America and um, he'd done some films like he did, he'd done uh, a film, Hell Drivers, with Stanley Baker and he'd done like a Ray Harryhausen film. Um, like Fantastic Island, I can't remember. and basically, I can't remember the official title, um, but it was a really good one. So he's, he's a talented director, didn't always get on with the people he was working with, but he is always a talented director. Um, this was a film that pushed him back up for a little bit, just uh, got people interested in him again, because this film just came and delivered. So, Sianfo directed it, he and Stanley Baker produced it, because this was when Baker was into producing films as well as just been in them. And it uh, is the story of a uh, battalion in the middle of Africa basically in the time of the Boer Wars where the Africans were fighting back against the British pretty brutally because they'd had enough of the British basically <laughs> you know and uh, Britain in other countries is, is this weird thing in a sense that they were going to other cultures that were slot them up quite backwards and trying to impose British rule, but also British education. So, in, a, in some good ways, they were, they were actually introducing like, laws and education to societies that needed them to compete in the, the, the modern world. But they also, because it's the British, they actually were brutal to people, snide, entitled, basically dicks. <laughs> you know, it's that thing as Britain is, it's like... Um, they went over and took over countries, and they did some bad stuff. They did some really bad stuff. That was just shameful. But they also brought in education and the how-to thing that Britain developed over centuries to countries that needed that. So it's like it's like um, there's a good side and there's a bad side. And at the moment in, in history, where we're always learning the bad side, all these colonial stuff that Britain did. But there was a bit of both. You, you kind of one foot though. You have to acknowledge the education stuff. But you also have to acknowledge the absolutely horrible brutality. It's like, if you're into the Britain did all the educational stuff, you're going to ignore the brutality. And if you're all into the Britain's horrible this time, you'll you'll go to the brutality and ignore the education stuff. But there was a bit of both. Like anything, it's complicated. But this is mainly about. Um, one battalion in the middle of nowhere, basically, that um, like suddenly are, are getting attacked by Zulus during the Zulu uprising. The Zulus are already taken out of thousand men battalion. So that's uh, one area in Africa, in this valley. There's no way out for them. There's no way to escape. Um, if they try and run, the Zulus will catch up with them because the Zulus know the land. The Zulus are fast. Much faster than the British could be. The British have wounded. So the British have to uh, be aware of that. And just the wounded from the, the various things that happen in life. In a, in a warm country that no one knows. And you know people pick up like, diseases and things. And uh, Stanley Baker's there. He's a officer of the engineer, engineering part of the army. Who's there to build a bridge. Michael Caine plays the leader of the battalion. He's of a rich family. And he's very inexperienced. But as the film goes on, you, you realise he's not actually that bad a person. He's got the ears and grace of someone who grew up rich. But when the things go down, when the situation gets bad, he actually steps up. And even when he's annoyed at Baker for Baker taking to take over all the time, if Baker's actually got a good point... He'll go along with it. He's not like, um, I'm going to oppose you because I need to oppose you. No, he's like, no, no, that's actually a good point. I never thought of that. We'll do that instead. It's like one of those, one of those good bits of characterization where the person you think is going to be the problem isn't really the problem. He's inexperienced, but he's actually smart enough to realise pretty quickly that he's inexperienced and he actually goes along with the person who seems to know what he's doing. So there is a lot of good characterization. Stanley Baker as a leader of the thing 
of the situation is terrific because this was him at his peak where he knew how he command the screen but also not to just to ham it up and take over. No, he actually knew how to just to dominate the focus. But it allows other actors around him to actually all get their moments. So you've got Nigel Green, who was also in uh, the criminal way, Baker, and he's like the um, staff command, staff sergeant who pretty much orders people around during the fight. And you've got a lot of character actors around about playing people who slowly come to the fore as the fight goes on. So you get a lot of people, even some faces you don't recognise, they do things over time, you start to follow those characters as well. You know, so it's like um, everybody chips in, even people who are initially cowards, when they realise that this is a fight or die situation, they step up. So it's one of those situations where people kind of show their best side slowly. The only person who does not show their best side is the chaplain, who's a drunk. He's in, he's in problems with drink, and then when everything goes wrong, he starts drinking heavily and starts telling people they're doomed and should not fight back. Like that's against the Lord, and uh, he's such a problem that Baker actually puts him in his, in his um, carriage and sends him off. And even the Zulus won't attack him and his daughter because it's like, this guy's useless, just, no, just leave him, let him go. They're focused on the soldiers, they're going to fight the soldiers, not the drunk pastor. So the soldiers are getting all the heat from the various things the British have done in, in Africa. Because, let's be honest, the British probably had it coming. <laughs> you know, if there's an uprising of people who are going to fight against the British, even though the British have better weapons, you don't do that for no reason. So, um... The film doesn't try and say, like, all oh, the British are innocent. The British, they don't say the British are guilty either, but they don't say they're innocent. They, just, they don't don't comment. The whole point is, these guys in this situation, they're going to have to survive, and that's it. That, the Zulus have their point of view, like, we're going to spree through the country and destroy these invaders. Because they are, to the Zulu, these guys are invaders. They're not wanted, they're not... They don't want them there. They don't need them there. And it's their country. So they've, they've, their point of view is, we didn't invite you. Go away. If you don't go away, we'll kill you. Um, so the film is, has a very simple setup, but it's what it does with it is really good because you're actually with the characters a lot of the time and the characters, how they interact, are the important drive of the film that actually makes it interesting. So you've got uh, the basic main characters. You've got um, Stanley Baker as the guy who takes over charge once, once they realise they're going to be attacked. And he's the one that organises the defences. And he says, we're not running, we're staying here. This is the best defence we've got. Because we've got defensible positions and we've got weapons. And we've got lots of things we can have to defend ourselves. If we go out and are mobile but without defences, we will be cut off pretty quickly because they've outnumbered us comically. They've, I mean, they, they, they've got... They, they, the British have very few men. The British basically have... So I suppose a small battalion. The Zulus have thousands. They are massively outnumbering the British. So Baker says, no, we're going to stay here and we're going to use everything we've got to defend ourselves. We're going to have layers of defences. And we're going to try and cover everywhere, every direction as much as we can. And he actually makes Michael Caine have a small battalion. They can go from place to place. That will back up wherever there's a defence needed. This place, this, this group can go. So there's, um, or the Zulus go there. You need certain people stuck in certain positions to defend it. But they might get outnumbered. So you send Michael Caine's troops to the bits the Zulus are trying to move to to try and get through the defences. So Baker's very tactical and very sent unsentimental. And he has, like, Kane pretty quickly going on board with him. And you've got Nigel Green as his support. And he's, Mick Nigel Green's a guy who knows the men better than anyone else. And he's the one who can prod the men to keep them going. So the, the so they so the, the basic three commanders is basically Baker, Kane, and Nigel Green, and it, that's as that's the kind of command thing. Baker, 
charge of Kane and charge of Green, but it's kind of a respectful thing where all three of them know each other's jobs and they all go on with it. And it's a build up. The first hour is the build up. And one of the good things is that I managed to watch this on projector, so I'd only ever seen the TV before. And TV is good, but on the projector we see the Africans, all these Zulus along a big mountain, just seeming going for miles. It's far more intimidating than it does when you see it on TV. Just the scale of it just is much more impressive. And it's wonderful. I mean, you do get a sense of, like, you know, this is unbeatable. And you've got all, you've got all the sounds of the Zulu walk, walking slowly um, en masse. That's intimidating because before you see them, you hear them. And the film is great at the build-up. But I understand the build-up and actually getting to the characters during the build-up is as important as the actual fight. When I mean, you get to the fight, it's going to be layers of fighting wherever it goes on for a while. But it means you can vary up the fighting because you know the characters, so you can do character bits in between the fighting. So the fighting's always between characters you know defending themselves in different situations because they've all been set up so well. So you, you never feel like you're just watching someone anonymous try to defend themselves. It's always someone you've actually spent a lot of time with. So you've got like the baritones who are the, the, the Welsh singers. So that's a Welsh regiment, basically, ruled by an Englishman. So there's a, there's a good joke early on where they're saying that some of them have numbers rather than names. And, they, and was one guy asked, why are you numbers? Why do you have just names? That's horrific. And he goes, well, that's Jones from this valley. That's Jones from that valley. He goes, there's too, too many Joneses. We, we used to use numbers. <laughs> Which is a nice little touch. And you've got the baritones who are chatting and, and singing as they wait and all that thing of the Welsh culture floating through. Obviously, Stanley Baker was Welsh as well, so he understood that culture. And it's just, just this sense of this other this bond between them that actually works. And as the film goes on, the bond between them stays strong. The bond between the characters stays strong. So even people they think are... Like, Hook is this character who's a... Uh, He's basically a criminal, he's a layabout, he's always trying to get off work. And eventually, when things get bad, he actually comes to, a, basically uh, stands up and actually is, becomes one of the guys and actually defends and ends up getting a, the, the cross for bravery. And even though I heard that's not actually true to, to reality, it's a really good character beat. Because it shows you how bad the situation is when the guy who's the absolute layabout who no one can stand realises I've got to I've got to join the boys and actually defend us. That's a big sign that things have gotten really bad. So the film is just wonderful at the character stuff in between this build up. The build up happens and it's prominent and it's always drives the scenes. But the film is also really smart in between during even during the moments there's a lot of touches here or there about character stuff, little lines here or there that pay off later on constant, just consistently, like little bits that are don't feel seem that important early on. And there were thin scenes where you're actually focusing on something else, but you remember that stuff too. And it becomes important as a defending because you know who these people are, and you know who's dying and you know who's surviving. Because you're getting an idea of what's the danger of this for this film. So it, it's it's a really terrific film and especially the end and the ending's great where basically, I mean, it's a film that's like 50, 60 years old so, and everyone knows they survive. So basically the end where basically the Zulus, after a night of fighting where so many Zulus are killed, the Zulus actually back away and respect the fighting spirit of the warriors of this one battalion is like, okay, we respect you. You are good. We're not going to attack you anymore. We'll go somewhere else and attack other people. You are good. And that's a nice moment. It's ultimately, they could have killed them. They still had so many numbers. They, so it's a, it's a, it actually explains the thing of why didn't they die? The Zulus could have killed them. The Zulus could have kept going into one. But because the fighting spirit they show over that whole night, it's so strong and so determined. The Zulus actually respect. It's like we're not killing these people. These people are have have earned the right to live. That we respect them as warriors. We are, we're not going to kill them. 
it's a nice moment. It's ultimately the realization that these people actually, the British soldiers earned their survival against people who were out to kill them, and they actually got the respect. That's the whole point of the ending, and it it really works. It's just this thing of respecting another, earning the respect of the opposition, and realizing that okay, we're well, going to part ways now. That's it. So it's a beautiful film, wonderfully done, wonderfully shot. It's not like the great masterpiece film of the 60s or anything. It's a genre film. It's proud of a genre film. It knows it's a genre film. It's based on historical fact, but it knows it's also it's a siege movie. So it understands what it is. And um, although it's a bit over long, the things that make it over long are the things you need to have in there to actually make the emotional stuff work. So it's like, it's an imperfect gem, basically. It's one of those films that's... Yeah, there are, there are things you could have cut, but that would have made the film worse. You know, it, it could have paced up a bit, but it made, it made the film worse because um, the imperfection is the thing that can give it its soul. So, Zulu's terrific. I'd highly recommend it. Go see it. Right, that's me for now.